G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith. I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be talking all about tracing. Now we're not getting out the tracing paper and the pencils and all that sort of thing but what we are going to do is run through Lightburn's tracing functionality so you can understand completely what all the sliders and all the buttons and all the settings mean so you can get better results every single time. Now before we jump into it, I will say this is a bit of a longer video, so bear with me, Is there's a lot of information to cover, but certainly worth it when you get to the end, you'll understand exactly what you're doing when it comes to tracing your images in Lightburn. I'd seen a lot of uh, comments in groups, Facebook groups and things like that about uh, tracing objects and, and all that sort of thing. And a popular thread along with that, with the responses, was just play with the sliders until you get what you want. Now that, that might seem like a, a reasonable response, but what I have found is that it's much better to understand the process, understand the tools that you're using, so you can actually get the best out of them. And that's no different with Lightburn, and it's no different with what we're doing on the laser engraving and all those sorts of things. So today I just want to deep dive a little bit further into the tracing functionality within Lightburn. I'm not using uh, images off the internet or anything like that. This is something that I've just done myself and it's a pretty basic sort of drawing, but uh, it'll demonstrate the uh, functionality, what we're talking about. And uh, so what we do, we bring in an image and then we right click on it and we click on trace image. So there we can see, if you can kind of see it, the you can see it like a bit of a purple sort of outline. And just with the standard settings that the default settings, it doesn't do a bad job. Uh, and we might look at that one and say, okay, well, let's just um, hit okay on that one. So then we can have a look at that one. Let's just turn the image off for the time being. And um, so we can see exactly what we've got. Now, looking at that one, I would say that that's largely correct. And uh, But what we have missed here is some... The additional details, if I just change that to a line object, so we can see that we've got most of the lines there, but there's some detail missing. So that's what we're going to look at today, is how we can actually get better results with the tracing functionality within the uh, Lightburn software. Let's just go back to the image, and we'll go back into Trace. So right-click, Trace the image. Okay, so we're back in the Trace image screen in Lightburn and what? let's just have a look at what additional settings and things that we've got available to us. If we just hover over it, the cutoff says the lowest brightness to include in the traced output and then threshold is the highest brightness to include in the traced output. And we've got ignore less than two and it doesn't give me a tool tip on that one. And we've got smoothness, optimize, couple of buttons here, fade, image, show points, and clear boundary. So the first one, and it's the biggest button here, and it makes a lot of sense, is called fade image. So if we click on that one, what it does is actually fades the image that we're tracing so we can see a better representation of the output of what we're going to get with, that, with those particular settings. So that's the first thing to look at and say, okay, well, that's, that, that makes it far more helpful to actually fade that image and get a better representation of what we're going to get. Okay, so the next things like we're talking about there is cutoff and threshold. Now to, to explain those, I'm going to use a different image and it'll make sense when we actually have a look at that image and, um, and it'll make a lot more sense as to how this cutoff and threshold actually work. So to explain the tracing functionality and the different parameters that we can use, I've created this very simple test here, and it's just a grid test, kind of like what we do with the burn test. And I've got some values here, so brightness values essentially. So we've got a brightness value of 60, a brightness value of 128, which is kind of like that mid gray, and then another brightness value here of 190. So let's just select the image and right click, go into trace image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fade the image so we can see exactly what's going on. And with these basic settings, we've got cutoff of zero, threshold of 128, ignore less than two, smoothness of one and optimize 0.2. But the main things that we're going to be looking at here in this example is the cutoff and the threshold. So cutoff is, is zero currently. So if we look at that again, what that actually means is the lowest brightness to include in the traced output. And if you recall in some of the previous videos that I've done is that we have these brightness values of zero, 
through to 255. So that represents the full scale of brightness from zero, which is black, all the way to th through to 255, which represents white. So everything in between there is essentially a shade of gray. And that's what we've done here. So I've got a value of 60, 128, and 190. Now, if we look at the default settings, we can see that the threshold is set to 128. And looking at our image with this middle square represents 128. And you can see there that it's, it's picked up that one, but it hasn't picked up this one with a value of 190. So if I was to increase the threshold here and take it through to say it around that 190 and let's have a look and see what actually happens okay so I get to 190 and it starts to include that one and I drag it up a little bit more and there we go so there may be some some slight variances in the values that are output from whatever editing software that you might be using but here we go a threshold of 191 and it's picked up that third square so that, hopefully that gives you an understanding, a basic understanding of what this slider is actually doing. So it, the threshold is what value of brightness it's including within that trace. So that's, that gives us a better understanding. So again, like if I just drop that down to say below, below 128, you can see there that um, it's picked up the 60 but it hasn't picked up the 128. But as soon as I get up to that 130, it's picked everything up and I slide that all the way up to, we get to the 190 mark. And you can see all of a sudden that has been included in the trace. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna look at here is this cutoff value. And if we mouse over that and uh, it'll give us the tool tip for that one, it's the lowest brightness to include in the traced output. So again, very simply, if we um, adjust this one, so at the moment, the, the, the 60, the 128, and the 190 are essentially uh, black. So if I just bring up the, turn off the fade image, you can see that they're black. So that would represent a cutoff value of zero. So if, technically, if I went anything above zero, we should start to see that these are being deselected within the actual trace. So we can see as I bring that up, the cutoff, okay, and we're seeing those little lines around it. And you might be thinking, okay, well, shouldn't they be all gone by now? And I guess my initial impression about that was, yes, well, they shouldn't be tracing that because it's actually black. But what we have to understand is that an image or a raster image is just made up of a series of square pixels. And if we were to jump into that picture, let's just go back into here. Okay, so if we if we have a look at the, if I zoom into these numbers, which we were saying that were black, and I zoom right in, we can see that there's a number of different shades of gray sitting around the outside. And that's purely because of the resolution of an image. It's just, um, I can go right in here and we can see that these values in here are, are black. But as soon as we step out uh, close to the edge, because we can't actually get a straight line, we're getting a varying degree of values of gray. So that makes sense that if we, um, if we go back into our trace. So taking a closer look at this uh, 128 as an example, with the, which is what we're seeing is black text, we've already established that around the edge, we're starting to see these gray values as it uh, starts to, the pixels just become lighter. So as soon as I start moving this cutoff slider above zero, or let's look at one, all of a sudden it's interpreting this image much differently. So it's no longer picking up all of the image and it's, it's kind of interpreting those values a little bit differently. So as I bring that up, and we can see that there's less of the one or less of the black that's being in included. And it's starting to do get pick up of those fringes around the outside. And that's still picking up all of those gray values. So it's not actually until we get much higher, we can see at that point, which is a cutoff value of 154, that it's no longer selecting any of that image. And that's because of the, the lightness values uh, surrounding those digits. Okay, so we're back there and let's just run through the example of how we might want to 
just pick up the three squares without any of the text. And there's a, a, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. So first of all, I'm going to fade that image again so as I know what I'm working with. And let's just increase our threshold so that includes, bring it up all the way up to 190 odd, thereabouts. So we know that that's, that's got us a, a, a good trace there at 191 and that corresponds to the values that we've got there. Now the easiest way that we can pick up this uh, three boxes or whatever the image might be that you're working with without actually including these values at the top is if I simply click and drag, I can then pick up only what's included. I can trace only what's w included within that box. So we can see we've automatically eliminated these, the, uh, the black text above. So again, if I just click on OK. Okay, so if we have a look at that image, I put this uh, selection on a different line, which is a fill line. And we can see quite clearly there that we have picked up the three squares without including the 60, the 128 and the 190. So that's one way of actually refining your selection as to what you're going to trace. Let's just jump back in and have another look at how we might be able to do that another way. So we're back in the trace image screen. What you'll notice is that every time that you go into everything, this is, this is what I've noticed, is that every time I jump back into the trace image, it sets it back to the default settings with a cutoff of zero and a threshold of 128 and these other uh, values down the bottom here. So let's just bring that, th that threshold is zero. We've got that to 192. We're just going to fade our image. And you can see that we've still got the black in there. So the, the other thing that we can do is start to raise the uh, cutoff value so it doesn't include black because this square here is at 60. So we can start to um, increase that cutoff. And like we established before, it's still picking up those values around the outside. So another way that we can actually, we don't want to hit to 60. So if I start hitting to 60, we're going to start losing our uh, first square there. So we keep that value below there, around about 41. There we go. So we can see all of these, uh, these little bits and bobs up the top here. Now, an, another way that you can eliminate those values is this ignore less than. So what that means, ignore less than two, is just ignoring anything less than two pixels that are selected. So we can start to increase this. And as I increase this, you can see all of a sudden that those uh, purple patches up the top in the um, text selection are getting less and less. But it's still not affecting our main... Uh, trace because we've got much more than uh, nine pixels selected. So we can just keep increasing that one. So if I, for example, let's go 100. Okay, that's that's reduced pretty much everything except for this one. So let's just double that one to 200. And there we go. So we've now been able to eliminate anything less than 200 and it's given me a really clean selection. So again, if I output that one and you can see we've got that uh, trace exactly as we want it. So that's two methods there that we can do that. There's a number of different other methods that we can have a look at and let's just look at one more. So the next uh, selection method is probably something that most of us have done in the past and uh, we've just accepted what this selection might be here. If I'll just fade that image again and let's just do a little bit of refining here. Just bring that back to zero and then uh, we want to get all the way back up to 90. Uh, 190 so it selects everything okay so we're back in business there and we would normally just output that one click OK on that and we've got our selection there and then what we would do is we would just ungroup that one and highlight these three here and simply delete so th there's a couple of different ways that you can do that and it's not going to be always possible to get the exact uh, trace of a, um, a of an object or a, an image uh, by either of those methods that we looked at previously, and it may just be that you do, you're going to have to do some sort of cleanup post tracing. 
So let's work with a practical situation where we might have that. Okay, so we've got our basic bear there. Let's just fade the image so as we know what we're actually working with. And we can see there, like we we established before, that we weren't actually picking up the black black nose here and the black nose and mouth sort of thing. We weren't getting the full full selection. If we pull everything back to zero, it should really just only be picking up the black. And we can kind of see there that we've got exactly that going on. And we can see there just by having that threshold that I'm now picking up the eyes and the black nose and mouth. Now, a couple of these other set settings to look at is uh, smoothness is one of those settings. And really what the smoothness is doing is if, if we jump in really closely here, the smoothness, if I increase the smoothness, if we look at our sharp edges here, uh, what that smoothness is going to do as I increase it, you can see that it changes it and, and just smooths things out a bit. Now, that may be something that you're looking with if you haven't got the highest resolution image that you're working with in the, in, in the first instance. But here, I'm happy just to run with the basic setting, which is uh, the standard is one. So you can play with that smoothness to um, you know, smooth out some of those uh, lines. Okay, so the next point here is this, this optimize. Now, optimize by its default is set to 0.2. And essentially what it's doing is it's trying to optimize the image to have the least amount of uh, nodal points, which are the points that we've got turned on here, which you can just show the points. Is uh, It's going to optimize the number of those. And it's basically finding a compromise between uh, not having so many nodes and so if I was to um, decrease that value point, you can see, so at zero, it's just added all these additional points, which may, may impact the smoothness. You can sort of see here that that's introduced a little bit of a bump there on the nose. And if I just pop that back to the standard, it's smoothed that out. So that's essentially what the optimize is doing. Um, and it's not something that I've really sort of played around with too much because I've, I've generally found that the uh, 0.2 or the default setting gives me a, an adequate result for the, the so sorts of tracing that I'm doing. Okay, so we've now selected our nose. I'm just going to click OK and there we can see. So we've got the eyes and we've got the nose selected. So without moving that image, I'm just going to... Um, select the image again and I'm going to do another trace. So previously we had selected uh, everything else bar that nose. So technically I, th I think we should be in a position now that if I just using the default settings, if I click OK on that one, it should give us and I'm just going to pop that on a different selection layer so we know what we're dealing with there. So I've just adjusted the layers so that we can see exactly what we've got there. So we've got the um, the nose and the mouth and the eyes. So we can see here in this particular layer, which is just our default, it hasn't picked up this lighter gray around the mouth. So in our first one, we've got the, the eyes and the nose, which is great. And in the default setting, we've got everything else. We've got the outline, but we just don't really have this middle section here. So this is where we want to go in and make a selection just of this middle section around the mouth. So let's have a look at that one. Okay, so just like the example before with the different boxes that have different gray levels, we're gonna apply the same here and see what we're, we can come up with. So I'm gonna fade that image, is we're just gonna keep going up until we can get that value that we're sort of looking for. And at the moment, that's got that sort of middle ground sort of gray. Okay, so 154, we've got, we've got that selection. But we've also got the out, outlying selection. So we've got a couple of options here. I can work with the cutoff and we can see I've got a nice selection there now. And all I've got is these additional little blobs that we had the same problem with the other one. So again, if I just get rid of that one and just say 50, which would be enough because it's got rid of everything else there. And I'm happy enough with that trace. I can click OK. And let's pop that on a different layer. So now you can see that we've got that middle section. And if I turn on my nose, so we've got all of the elements that we need to uh, turn this into a engraving. So what we might want to do here is do a cutout of this one as well. So I'm just going to select my green layer because that's got the outside uh, selection there. I'm going to do an offset fill. 
And I only want the outer shapes for this one. So that's all I'm going to do. And it's going to be an outward of 0.1. And if I just click OK on that one now, I'm just going to turn the basic bear image off so I can see exactly what I'm working with. Let's just zoom right in. And you can see at the moment it's got the, the it had the in, inner one selected. So I want to select the outer one and I'm going to pop that one on a different layer and it's going to be a line. So again now, so there you go. So we've got our cut line as the out, outline one. We can set this one at uh, whatever sp speeds and powers that we want so we can achieve different levels of burn within that image and we've got a great finished product. Now, if you're perceptive, you may have noticed that we have um, in our original, so if I just turn this layer off for the moment, you can see that I've got the original ones here, and I don't necessarily want those in this layer because I'm going to do those at a darker burn. So what we need to do is be able to subtract those elements, which is the nose and the mouth and the eyes, from this layer. Now the easiest way that we can do that one, what I need to do is I need to duplicate this layer and this will make sense in a, little, in, in a moment. So I've selected that layer because this is what we're actually going to be using as our subtraction. So I'm just going to Command D because I'm on a Mac and duplicate that layer. I'm just going to pop it on this purple one for the time being and I'm going to, this is going to what I'm going to subtract from my green uh, layer. So if I first of all to uh, use the Boolean tool, which is these welding tools over here, I'm selecting A, which is going to be my base. And then if I hold down shift, and that is going to be what is going to be subtracted from A. So if we look over here in the uh, Boolean subtract, it subtract one shape from another. So A minus B. So in this case, A was the green layer, which is the main face and then B which is the nose and eyes so if I just click on that one that has now subtracted that from the green so if we look there we, we no longer have that one in the um, in the green and we've just got our nose selection there so that's got everything that we need to complete the finished product I know a lot of people out there that do the recipes and burn those on the charcuterie boards or the um, cutting boards those sorts of things and it's just handwritten recipes which is a great thing for uh, the recipes that might have been within the, with the family for a long time I've just got an example here of uh, of a recipe I've just grabbed this off the internet so uh, I'm not intending to use this or sell this in any way this is purely just for the um, purpose of showing this as an example so if we go into the trace image let's take a look at what we've got here if we just fade the image so we can see what we've got the sketch image function here is pretty much designed for this type of thing and this may not be the perfect example, but I'll, I'll just run through what it's actually doing. So if we turn on the sketch trace, what it's doing is looking for basically sharpness throughout the image and selecting that uh, sharpness. And the, the whole objective here is to get away from where there might be, if we turn that image back on, uh, these grayer areas that might actually match the uh, same uh, like in some of these sections here, it might be the same sort of um, brightness levels. The uh, sketch sketch trace is designed to eliminate a lot of these areas. But in this case, we might be working with an image that is not entirely uh, suited for this uh, scenario. But that's essentially what sketch trace is to do. Is and, and you can use the same sort of principles with the threshold. You don't get the cutoff in this instance, just the threshold so that you can sort of get that to a level where it's actually picking up uh, what you're wanting to do. Let's look at another method that we might be able to use to get an outcome on this particular image. So what we're going to do is go in and make some adjustments to this image and uh, see how we can maybe improve it to uh, pick up a better uh, outcome. So I'm not sure that these image modes really make any difference, but I'm just going to change that to grayscale for the time being. The sliders that we're going to be working with predominantly here are contrast, brightness, and gamma. So if I just instantly increase that contrast, what we can see is that we're eliminating a lot of that background. And I want to be very careful here that I don't eliminate too much of the letters because obviously that's important that we maintain a lot of those letters. 
So if I drag it too far, we can see that we're going to start to sort of eliminate the, the letters that we've got there. Brightness level, let's just play with that brightness. And again, we don't want to... So we're around about there is probably as much as we can do. And the gamma. Let's see how we go with those settings and um, we might get a, a favorable outcome. So if I go in there and do my trace image now, that seems to be a pretty good outcome that we've, we're have we picking up all the lettering. And we don't have a lot of, of the uh, lines being picked up here, but we can play with the ignore less than uh, groupings and see that that's actually what it's actually doing as I increase that one, it's starting to take out the uh, the uh, portions of the um, letters here. So we want to keep those in there. So we're going to have to go with that one. Let's see if we can bring more of that lettering in. Pretty tricky. So this is probably my lightest letter here. And uh, we've got all of that now. So let's see if we can eliminate a few of those dots. And we're doing pretty good there. And we're still keeping all of that. And that's probably about as far as I'm willing to push that one. So we'll have a look at what that trace looks like. We have a look at that one. And this is a common problem that because we picked up this border and all of that sort of stuff as well, it's uh, essentially inverted the image. So if I turn that uh, image off, so as we're not actually seeing it, and we can see, well, that's not exactly what we want to engrave. But uh, there's an easy solution to that one if we just ungroup that one. The, uh, if we look at this outer, we delete that one, it's going to get rid of it and put it in the right um, fill mode that we're actually wanting to do. So I've ungrouped this image and so it's really just going to be a case of doing some cleanup on here. And if we come in a little bit closer, we can see here that we've only got part of the sugar. If I turn that image back on, we're seeing that we're missing some of the sugar. So what we can do there, this is something that you're, you're able to do and using the tools that we know are available to us. If I just jump into this one again and trace image. So I can see there that I've got a good scan on the sugar. I'm getting a good trace on that one. So just holding my click and drag. And if I just do that one, I can pick up that word altogether and paste that one in. Move that one up for the time being. And let's turn our image off again so we know what we're working with. And I'm just going to get rid of that that sugar and we can see exactly where that one is so this one i'm just going to bring that back down just arrow back down and bring that back into place so that's good there and then we have this scenario where we have this line that has been attached to that that uh, word there so there's a couple of ways around that we can do that with using the tools that we know that we've got available to us so I'm just going to grab the um, octagon or pentagon tool there. And I'm just going to make a point around about there will do. I can position that one to where I want it to break. So around about there is where I want to break this up. So again, we're using the uh, Boolean tool, Boolean subtract. So I'm starting with my A, selecting my B with the shift, and then doing the uh, Boolean subtract. And now we can see this is still one object. So again, we're just going to ungroup and I can now delete that one. And I can follow that same process to delete any of those extra lines. If I'm dragging from left to right, it's only what's fully encapsulated within that red box that's going to be uh, selected. So because these words weren't selected uh, completely, I can then just delete those. I can run through and do a full cleanup on that recipe and we'll be all good. And the same thing would apply here is with this particular one, I, I would do a, a rectangle in this case. And let's just say I'm gonna break it there. Okay, so select my A, shift, select my B, and Boolean subtract, and that gets rid of that line. And again, we can ungroup that if we wanna do further cleanup. All we're really looking to do is get as close as we can to that original recipe. So how did you go with all that? I, I know it's a lot of information to take in, 
but you should have a much clearer understanding of how those tracing tools actually work and how you can use those to your advantage to get the finished product that you're actually looking for. And if you have found that to be useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, we look forward to catching you in the next video. And until then, be creative and stay grateful. Bye for now.